Hey, I'm Ira Block, Sony Artisan of Imagery, and I'm really excited to talk to you today about Sony's new trio of compact lenses and the A7C camera. I've been using the system the past couple of months, and it really, really has changed a lot of the way I can shoot my subjects. I've traveled the world extensively. I've been to countries like Iceland, Mongolia, Thailand, Cambodia, Laos, Vietnam, Bhutan, amongst many others, all with my Sony Alpha equipment. And it's been fantastic what I could do using the Sony system. And of course, I've been here at home for quite a while. Years ago, when I switched to the Sony Alpha system of camera and lenses, it was really great to be able to work with a smaller camera and smaller lenses. And I've traveled the world with the Sony system and have been really, really happy using it. And I love the ability to shoot in situations with a system that I couldn't shoot before. So now when I tell stories, my stories are much more complete. And big surprise, Sony's even come out with a smaller system. The A7C and this trio of compact lenses are gonna be really exciting for me to use once I could start traveling internationally again. One thing I really like about this is you could get it in the silver and black tone and it sort of reminds me of my old days shooting film with rangefinder cameras. The viewfinder is off to the side, which is really good because when you're interacting with people and the camera is not covering your entire face, so it really helps to draw people in as opposed to when the camera is totally covering your face. And the articulating screen is really something I enjoy, and you could do selfies if you feel like it by just twisting it that way or if you're doing vlogging it works for that and sometimes if I can't get high enough to my subject I'm able to raise it up and just tilt the screen or on the other hand if you don't feel like bending down you can get that low angle shot it's a pretty cool camera and it has a lot of the same function buttons that its big brothers have. These compact prime lenses will fit any Sony E-mount camera. They're not just for the A7C. The advantages of these lenses and the camera size are really important to me because you're less obtrusive. People don't feel intimidated the way they do when you pick up a big camera and try to start shooting. So I could get more intimate photos with this smaller, great system. Besides travel, these small lenses are really good for street photography. And since I've not been traveling too much the last year, I've been working a lot more here in the streets of New York. Okay, well now I'm on the Upper West Side of Manhattan because I know there are a lot of dogs here and dogs are a great way to break the ice with strangers. You see someone walking a dog, you start asking him about the dog, then you could ask him about taking pictures and again, small camera, much, much easier to easy to break the ice with. So let's see what we could find here on the Upper West Side of Manhattan. Oh, and I already see somebody with some dogs. Hey guys. How are you? Look, these are some nice dogs. Yeah. You don't see many French poodles around, do you? Nope. Um, Jenny is seven. She's from Victoria Island, British Columbia. And Bailey is seven months, 
He's from uh, Allentown, Pennsylvania. So wow, know. they're really nice. Can I do a couple of pictures of the dogs and you? Yeah, sure. sure. Uh, let's let's go over to these steps. See if they'll. Uh, and you can sit down, yeah, and see if they'll cooperate. Bailey, is this one? Bailey. Bailey, look over here, guy. Hey, Bailey. was fun but I'll tell you it's not easy shooting dogs you have no control but uh, people a little easier and again just be friendly meet people and I ended up shooting with the 24 because I couldn't control the dogs tight enough on the steps and the 24 gave me the wider shot so I had dog down on the sidewalk then sort of going up the steps. And you could see the black steps look great at first to me because of the high pitch. But in the end, the darker dogs look better on some of the other steps. So it was, it's, it's fun experience. So let's look at some of the photos. I needed some depth of field because I wanted to get the front dog and the far dog in focus but I also needed some shutter speed because I was afraid the dogs were moving around too much with the 24 millimeter lens at ISO 640 and things are starting to look good I needed the front dog's profile so her nose really showed up in the photo I continued shooting then and changed my position a little bit and went horizontal. I upped my shutter speed a bit to a 200th of a second, still shooting with the 24 millimeter lens. But it's now that I'm starting to discover that even though I love the way the stairs looked and the high angle it took, the black staircase and the black dogs were not going to work for me. I saw another staircase close by with the white steps. And here I think the dogs stand out a lot more. At this one, I really was worried about depth of field, so I went to F11, but I was still a little concerned about shooting a hundredth of a second. So I just waited and waited until the dogs had finally settled in. I then upped my shutter speed to a two hundredth of a second at F7.1, Again, worrying about the dog's movement, but I think they were pretty much in control then, and you could see they really do stand out a lot better against the uh, white stairs. And eventually, I caught a good moment. I was waiting for the dog walker, Len, to get a little more expressive and interact with the dogs. Here, I'm at 125th of a second at F9, at ISO 640 and still with the 24 millimeter lens. A little risky being at 125th of a second with this kind of movement, but I got lucky and I caught a great moment between Len and his dogs. And then I just changed my angle, got down a little lower so the dog in the front, I think that's Bailey, he said was looking a little more majestic from that low angle using the flip out screen on the a7c and len the dog walker is looking pretty good and all the dogs and len everyone's got a pretty good position here i think this must be my favorite one okay so you could see how easy it was to approach somebody and get interesting images of them and again look at the difference the compact a7c with a compact lens and my a1 with a zoom lens big difference and when you're working with people i think it's easier to approach them and to engage them with a smaller camera 
you look like you're a tourist, you look like you're an enthusiast, as opposed to looking like a professional where people will wonder really what you're up to. Walking through the streets of New York with this new system is great. I could carry a small bag with the camera and the three lenses, my extra batteries, my extra cards, and it's very, very simple. It's opened new doors to what I could photograph. And of course, I've always enjoyed working with prime lenses. Using a prime lens creates a new style to your work and what you're shooting. You have to zoom with your feet. You have to walk around your subject, find what the best angle is, and you have to work within the limits of the lens you're using, which helps you as a photographer create a sort of style. When I first started using this new great system, I was really excited to walk around New York. I went to Coney Island, to the Manhattan Bridge, to do a shot of the sunrise on Lower Manhattan. And I did some pictures at night from Brooklyn Bridge Park looking across at Lower Manhattan. Those photos were taken with one of these lenses on the Sony Alpha 1. I wanted to see how these lenses performed on that camera and they perform really well. All these experiences and using these lenses helped me understand more of what I was able to do with this new system. I like shooting on rainy days. It brings out a certain color in the city, the wet streets and sidewalks. I jumped into a doorway when the rain really started coming down hard and I noticed some New York City traffic police were also trying to get out of the rain. So I looked and saw the great sort of yellow-green color, and I grabbed a quick shot, a hundredth of a second, F4, ISO 400, and this time I still had the 40 millimeter lens on, which seemed to fit the situation just fine. One of my techniques, which I've mentioned before, is finding a great background and waiting, or some cases hoping, something really nice happens in front of that background. Well, another rainy day and a great red colored background and I just stood on the corner of the street and waited for things to happen. I photographed many different people walking past me against the background and in this case, the yellow coat, the umbrella, and just the position of the feet worked. And here I was shooting a 400th of a second F8 at ISO 800, again with the 40 millimeter lens. I, I think I like this lens. Walking around New York City streets, you could always find a frame to take at every corner, especially downtown. This is the famous Oculus in Lower Manhattan, and I had photographed it many times before, but it was a quiet day. There weren't many people around, which is really unusual, and I wanted to take advantage of the situation. I was using the 24 millimeter lens because I needed a wide lens to capture all of the Oculus, and I liked the yellow traffic light against the white background and I just waited as I normally do until something happened and a guy on a delivery bike came by and completed the image for me. And this was shot at a 250th at F9 ISO 160 because it was a pretty bright sunny day and again 24 millimeter lens was the only lens that worked here. Being a photographer I'm never ever satisfied with a picture I get. I'm always looking for something new, something different, another angle. Even though the pic first picture I took of the Oculus was fairly nice for me, I kept moving around and I found an image, again with the 24 millimeter lens, looking at parts of the Oculus, but also the ability to see the World Trade Center on the right side of the image frame. This was shot at 3 20th of a second, 
F8 at ISO 160. And that day the sky was super, super clear. So the Oculus stayed white, but the intense blue of the sky reflected off the World Trade Center and all the other buildings around there that had glass on it. Shooting these raindrops with the blue and yellow background with the 50 millimeter lens worked out really well. I had to use a aperture of f8 because I wanted some depth of field. I wanted to be able to focus on the raindrops but still have the blue city bike and the yellow cab somewhat recognizable. I found another surprise on the street. Some steam coming out of the ground on a repair they were doing. So I got in a position, I knew the steam would look the best backlit, but I wanted the sun in the picture, but I wanted to see the flare of the sun's rays so to do this, I shot at F16, which gives you those nice point sources from the sun. This was a 320th of a second at F16, ISO 200, and here using the 24 millimeter lens. So I was able to get the color of the steam pipes, the backlit white steam, and then a bit of that nice star flare effect from the sun. I was waiting to meet up with my friend George and I found him leaning against this nice red wall wearing his blue jacket and all these fantastic shadows of the trees around him. And I just told him, stand still, don't move, stay where you are. I shot this at a 320th of a second, F6.3, ISO 200, and here the 40 millimeter lens, which was on my camera at the time, just worked out fine. I played around a little bit moving closer and further back to get the right balance. I liked the window, the brick window on the left part of the frame because the color changes and the different colored bricks and sort of breaks up this shot a bit on the left side. Another project I'm working on is documenting some of the people in my neighborhood. In New York City, you really become a creature of your own neighborhood and you tend to know a lot of the people. I stopped by my local dry cleaner and asked if I could do a photo of him and brought a strobe in to give him a little better lighting. So this was shot at an 80th of a second, f2.8, at ISO 200 using the 24 millimeter lens, and I had a strobe being held on camera left. I mixed the light from the strobe with the light of the dry cleaner store to get the right balance so you could see his face lit a bit, but yet still have the interior of his shop nicely lit by the ambient light. I like shooting my portraits horizontally. I know most people think portraits have to be vertical, but there's a certain breaking up of angles and framing that seems to please me when I'm shooting horizontally. The other thing I like to do is cut off the top of someone's head. When I do this, I think you get focus more on the people's eyes. By cutting off the top of the head, you look right into someone's eyes and if they've got a nice specular highlight in their eyes, you really can sort of react to that person and the person's eyes and you get some feeling of that personality of your subject. I did this photograph using the 50 millimeter lens which actually focuses pretty close, shooting at a 200th of a second at F4 at ISO 250. And I put him off center so that the right side of the image, you could see his amazing hair. My friend's little girl had really fantastic eyes and I loved the little doggies on her mask. So I did a shot of her again 
cutting off a bit of the top of her head so you could get focus down the eyes, keeping her off center to the left of the frame so that the bokeh of the out of focus bricks faded off to the right. 50 millimeter lens again here, shooting at a 160th of a second at F4 at ISO 320. And of course, there is a local bar in my neighborhood, a very old Irish bar that I've been going to for many years. And I know all the people that work there and it looks great inside. It's got a really old interior, nice wood. So I did a portrait of one of the bartenders using the 40 millimeter lens because I wanted a bit wider lens than the 50 to take in some of the background. And we brought a light along again, lit it up and got some nice colors and nice designs and nice shapes. So the focusing system on the A7C is really fantastic. I was in Washington Square Park watching these skateboarders do some tricks and I just set the A7C up to a sports mode in my mind, shooting at a 2,000th of a second, F3.5, ISO 400 with a 24 millimeter lens. The tracking with the A7C just stayed on the skateboarder and I liked the backlighting and the long shadows I had in this image. It didn't happen that easily. I had to shoot, oh, maybe half a dozen skateboarders before I got the right moment. But all the people I shot stayed in focus. It tracked so well. It was, and this is not really what people would consider a sports camera, but you can do action shots really well with this A7C. Early on, while we were in lockdown and couldn't travel at all, I found a project to do, something I've been thinking about for a while but never really had the time. I decided to do a documentary photo essay on my mother. My mother just turned 100 a few months ago, and she still has her shop in Brooklyn. And I thought, I need to document this. I need to show people and I need a record of a hundred year old woman still working in the time of COVID. Originally, I started shooting with the A7C and some of the other lenses because at that point, these compact primes were not out. But as soon as the compact primes came out, it was a much, much better way to shoot my mom because even though it's my own mother, how many times did I hear from her, don't you have enough already? The A7C, which has a full frame 24 megapixel sensor, was great for shooting my mom, even before the compact lenses came out. With the A7C inside the store, I was shooting ISO 1600 to 3200. In this image, I was shooting a 60th of a second at f4.5 at ISO 1600. I also shot details in the store of my mother doing her work, close-ups of her paying bills, doing accounting, showing that even at over 100 years old, my mother was still sharp enough to do all the paperwork. And I tried to get a variety of shots. Here, I needed to get a shot sort of at dusk or when the sun was low enough so that I could see the reflection and the light coming out of a store window. It was really interesting when I went with my mother to the audiologist to have her hearing aids adjusted I went in the little room where he's going to be doing the testing, shot for a while. But when I left the room when she was being tested is when I saw this other shot. I really think the reflections of 
the glass and the multiple images of her because of the refracting of the glass made for a more dynamic picture than the straight shot inside of the audiologist's room. Documenting my mother at home was also really important to me. So I did spend a few nights at my mom's house, which is something I haven't done in a long, long time. The composition with the aid, giving her a spoonful of medicine, really seemed to make this picture work for me. And this one I was shooting at an 80th of a second at f3.2. And the lines leading into my mom and just the way she's so blasé and nonchalant about taking the medication seemed to be a really good moment. I was shooting all these candid images of my mother and I didn't think she always looked her best, but the photos were very natural and very real. And I decided that I should do a really nice portrait. I got hold of a ladder because I wanted to do a closer shot of my dad's military flag in the store. And I climbed the ladder and shot this with the 24 millimeter lens at a hundredth of a second at f4. With the help of the ladder, I found another image, another angle, something that really did help complete my story about my mom in her store. And again, the 24 millimeter lens was perfect for the shot. Documenting my mom's story has really been a long, long-term project. I've been probably working on it for close to a year now, and I'm still working on it. Just last week, I went back to the store to photograph a couple of different images from some different angles. You ready to have your picture taken again? Oh, come on, Ira. Get finished with me. I can't stand this. You don't like it? No. You're the star. <laughs> yeah. You, you are the star here. Yeah. All right. There you go. How's business today? Oh, lousy. <laughs> I want to, oh, you put up the, uh, you put up the shot I did for you. Yeah, I gave you for Mother's Day. Yeah, I have that frame also. Looks good. Yeah. Let me get a picture of you by there. All right. Okay. Oh, that eye autofocus picks up your eye looking good. What? You're looking at me like. You're not used to getting your photo taken? No. Taken a lot, remember? Yeah. Bye-bye. I'll see you in a week. Okay, sweetheart. All right, make some money, sell some bags. Okay, sweetheart. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. Since my mom's store is fairly small, I use the 24 quite a bit because I needed that extra expanse in the background to give the feeling you know, of where she was. But when I needed shots that were a little bit closer, I usually switched over to the 50 millimeter. The 40 and the 50 millimeter are f2.5 lenses, which is really a nice fast f-stop. The 24 is a 2.8 lens and 2.8, 2.5, when you're working in low light, really helps. Hey, now we're in Prospect Park in Brooklyn, and I'm gonna be doing some photos of a friend of mine, and just because this camera is small and the lenses are small, don't think it doesn't have a professional usage. Today, I'm gonna to be shooting with a radio transmitter to a pro photo strobe to help fill in and put light on the model. Don't be fooled by the camera size. It has the same attributes as its big 
brother alpha cameras. I've got a button set up for eye autofocus, which is great because I can get right on the eye of the model and know I'm going to be in focus. And I can make all the different adjustments to control my available light and the strobe light. So let's stop talking and let's get shooting. Yeah, go, Ira. Yeah, there you go. Showing me carrying all the. Everything. Yep. Doing all the work as usual. Yep, that's why you're the leader. <laughs> All right. Put, put the hand through the hair again like you just did. Yeah. All right. Good. I started that. <laughs> that was my truth. <laughs> Here you go. Drop your chin a little bit. Yeah, like that. That's great. All right. Yeah, look, yeah, that's a good look like that. The wind's blowing. Great. <laughs> all right, we've changed locations, and I like the way the angle of all these tree arms are coming out. So I think we're going to have Asha pose right here, and George is doing a great job with the lighting, and everything seems to be working fine. The only problem I have is if I do horizontals, this transmitter hits my hat, but there are worse problems to deal with in life. So let's shoot a few more photos. The other great feature is this tilt-out screen because I'm on low ground. I want a little higher angle, so by pulling the screen out, I get a little more, but I think I'm going to change lenses. This is, the, I've been using the 50, and I think it's uh, time to maybe go to the 24 and get more distortion and more angle with the, with the branches. So let me go get the 24. Look down, drop your head. Nice smile. So now I think I'm going to switch to the 40 millimeter lens. Sometimes it's tricky working with the 24 millimeter lens with people because at 24 you do get some distortion. So you've got to be a little careful and you don't want to get too close. So 40 is going to look good. 40 is an, an unusual length for me, but I'm really beginning to like it. Strike some poses. Oh, yeah, it looks great. All right, I think it's a wrap here. We got some nice shots. Got to use all the different lenses and work with the strobe, which is really worked out well and the transmitter on the camera so the camera's working well thank you asha it's been yeah. <laughs> it's been great george working with you always, always a, ple a pleasure always a pleasure the close-ups i did with the 50 millimeter shooting at f 2.8 were amazingly sharp take a look see how it looks at a hundred percent it's pretty unbelievable for such a small lens the 40 millimeter lens was my favorite for three quarter body shots shooting in Prospect Park. But as happy as I was shooting this, I still was looking for some different angles. And I really liked the way these worked out. I was shooting a 60th of a second at 4.5. And the 40 millimeter lens was a really nice perspective for this shot. I really wanted to get a feeling for the bokeh or the bokeh, depending on where you're from, the out of focus background with these lenses. So I went to the 50 millimeter lens, got in close to do some headshots, and I was shooting at a 200th of a second at f2.8 at ISO 80. And having someone hand hold your strobe so you're not locked down on a light stand. And you could position the light differently as the model moves her head and changes her body position. So you get a bit of a different look than you would if you were locked down with a light on a stand. This is the 24 millimeter lens. This is the 40 millimeter lens. And 
I'm gonna try to fit, no, I guess I can't fit all three in my hands, but then this is the 50 millimeter lens. So you could see really small, compact. The 24 is the f2.8 lens. The 40 and 50 are both f2.5. And all three lenses have a declickable aperture, which works really well if you're shooting video with this camera. The other thing that amazed me is all three lenses have a function button on the lenses, just like the larger lenses do. And personally, I've set that function button for eye autofocus, which is one of my favorite ways of shooting these days. When I was shooting the model in Prospect Park, you saw how often I used eye autofocus. It goes right to the subject's eyes, and you could recompose the image any way you want. So amazing to me that Sony was able to include a function button on the lens and the clickable aperture. Because I'm having such a great time with the Sony a7C and the compact lenses, does this mean I'm giving everything else up? No, of course not. As a professional, I use the tools that I need for each situation. And I could still use these compact lenses on my A1. So maybe I go on a trip where I'm using a bigger system. I still have plenty of room to take the smaller lenses with me in case I'm in a situation where I need them. They really don't take up much room. So in the end, I'm going to be using whatever is the best equipment for the situation I'm shooting. But for you, if you're looking to get into a new system and you want to travel light and you want a smaller camera, something to consider. Thank you for being here with me today and I'm ready to take any questions you have about the new Sony a7C or the trio of compact lenses or anything else you want to ask me. Hello everyone and welcome to Be Alpha Live. I'm Christopher Robinson, editor of alphauniverse.com and host of the Alpha Universe podcast. And I'm joined today with by Ira Block, Sony Artisan Imagery and National Geographic Photographer. Ira, thanks for being here. Hey, Chris. Good to see you again. Always nice to have a chat with you. Likewise. And we've just been watching that great presentation. And uh, during the course of the presentation as it was going in the chat, we got a lot of great comments. And um, we are live, and I encourage you to continue to use that chat to send your questions in for Ira. Um, Ira, we got a lot of comments about the sequence with your with your mother, and I'd like to start there, if I could, for a second. A lot of people said how, how actually very heartwarming and touching that whole sequence was. How long have you been doing that project? Well, it's been probably about a year now. I started it after COVID uh, happened. I haven't, you know, I can't travel at all, so I needed something to do while I was home, and I I've always been talking about doing a project about my mom. Never had the time, never had the inclination. So COVID was the perfect time to finally get this thing done. And when you were photographing or making that series, was black and white something that you decided on ahead of time or was it a, a choice later on? I actually started in color because I've, I've been shooting color forever, you know, last 30 years of my career has been all color and I went directly to color. But when I got back and started looking at the images, I just thought the color was too distracting from the actual story. And that's when I decided to do it in black and white. When you're usually shooting, like you said, in, in color, do you do a lot of post-processing or um, do you keep things mostly straight out of camera? Well, coming from my National Geographic background, you know, we do very little post-processing. 
because you know we we want to keep the picture real and i i've spent my life learning how to get the picture right in camera so post processing just is minimal at this point we got a question that came in someone who was curious about the a7c and the the lenses that you were using those new uh, g series lenses the question being um, does the A7C use uh, regular E-mount lenses or only those those three? And uh, of course, the a A7C will use uh, all the E-mount lenses. But um, Ira, the A7C is particularly well suited to the the three new G series lenses. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, you know, I when I'm trying to be unobtrusive, working with people, you know, just sort of blending into everyone else in the room. A small camera, small lenses, it's a really helpful combination. And it's a full sensor camera. I've been using some of the, uh, you know, uh, A6600, 6500 cameras. It's a little bit larger than those cameras, but I like the full sensor. And so I've been, I've sort of gravitated towards working with this camera and these three lenses now. Ira, you uh, also use the Xperia uh, cameras quite a bit, Xperia smartphones with their camera capabilities. Can you talk a little bit about that and um, how that camera system, that compact system works in the Xperias? Well, the, the Xperia phone system is fantastic. I've been, it's, my, it's my phone that I've been using for the last three years, I guess. And if I don't have a camera with me, or even sometimes when I have a camera with me, I could use the Xperia phone. And again, it's part of that idea of using smaller systems when I'm dealing with people or you're traveling or you're in a really sensitive, sensitive environment. The, I still have, you know, I've got my A1, which I love. I used it, uh, last month at a fencing tournament in Philadelphia shooting action. I'm fortunate I'm a professional and I have all these tools and I just pick the tool that works the right way for the situation I'm shooting. And there's something to be said for that. You know, when you're, if you're going to be in a confined situation when you can't bring say that alpha one, um, but you can bring something like an Xperia or even an a seven C it might not be the, uh, you know, the, the same camera as an Alpha One with a big G Master lens. But you're talking about the choice between, you know, no photo or a photo taken with one of those other um, sort of, I don't want to call them lesser cameras. They're certainly not lesser, but just different cameras and lens combinations. Yeah, you know, you what you have with you at the time is what you're going to work with. And amazingly, the image quality from these, the A7C, and even the Xperia, I remember when I first got my hands on that Xperia, I made a 17 by 22 inch print to show the people at Sony. Of course, it was perfect conditions. And the A7C's got a 24 megapixel full frame sensor. It's, I don't know if it's the same one that's in the A7 III or if it's similar, but it's a great sensor. And I don't think about issues of quality. If you ever have to go into a situation where you can only have sort of one camera and one lens, what lens would it be? Well, of course, it depends on the situation, but uh, I I like the 28 and the 35 millimeter lenses. Those are favorite lenses of mine because I like to shoot with a wide lens so I could get people in the foreground and then sort of let the background naturally come into the picture and tell the story of the environment. So the, you know, those lenses are good. And of course, with these new compact lenses, the 40 is a new length for me to experiment with. It does have, I've been pretty happy working with the 40 millimeter lens, which surprised me. We're here live with Ira Block. We're taking your questions. Please put your questions in the chat. And Ira, I want to talk about something that was in the beginning of that, that great presentation. Um, you had talked about uh, icebreakers. You had said um, 
as you were shooting there in Manhattan, that dogs make a great icebreaker. You can always talk to someone about their dog. Um, as a, as a dog owner, I know I, I can't shut up about my dogs, but, um, do you have any other ice breaking tips for when you're photographing people? Well, when you, when you run into someone, you try to psychologically see, you know, a, profile them, I guess a bit, and you try to talk to them about something they're interested in, because that's a great icebreaker, you know, find a subject that's in their ballpark and then you know they're more willing to speak and once you start speaking and you could be charming and you could be very you know endearing and eventually there's a possibility and hope that you will be able to say hey let's you mind if i do some photos of you this is what i'm working on of course what I usually tell people is to say they're photo students and they have a horrible professor. And if they don't come back with photos, they're going to get in trouble. So that's the begging part of uh, getting to get people to let you shoot them. That's a, that's a great tip. Um, do you always sort of try to make conversation with, with your subjects or do you sometimes um, just kind of go in and, and start photographing? I'm not a, street photographer who's, you know, walking down the street, picks up a camera, you know, takes one or two images and moves on. I think I'm too neurotic about composition and busy backgrounds. So I try to engage people. And usually right after you engage them and take the first set of pictures, they tend to be a little stiffer and the photos aren't that good. But if you wait it out and keep shooting and keep shooting, eventually they get tired of dealing with the situation and they go back to doing what they do normally. And another advantage of the alpha cameras is a silent shutter. Because how many times do I recall shooting with the camera, click, 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 and the subject will say, well, don't you have enough already? But with silent shutter, they, they just don't know what's going on. So silent shutter is a great advantage. And the A7C has that also. Which, of course, your mother was asking, don't you have enough already at one point? Yeah, even my own mother. I mean, you know, no matter who you're shooting, it's eventually haven't you taken enough pictures? You know, I've got other things to do. And then I would just say, do your other things. Just, you know, do whatever you need to do. Pretend I'm not here. We got a question about the A7C in particular. And as someone who has photographed with uh, so many of the Sony cameras, the question is about the EVF on the A7C versus the, uh, the other A7 series bodies. How do the two compare? Well, the EVF on this camera is that flip out one, which has some advantages. Uh, it's... Well, even the other ones that are not flip out, you still can do the high angle and low angle, but the flip out I'm getting used to. I, I sort of like the flip out uh, viewfinder. Do you ever shoot with that instead of, um, you know, kind of looking through the camera to kind of um, like the way people would, would use medium format or large format where you're able to make eye contact uh, a little differently and have the camera in a different position? other than just, you know, sort of using it for that low angle or high angle shot? I really like looking through the viewfinder. I think it's better composition for me. And with the camera like the A7C, where the viewfinder is off to the side and half your face is still exposed, it does make you connect better. But there are times if I really want to connect, I will use the flip out viewfinder and hold it down sort of get things set up and then start a conversation with people it you know not having the camera in your face and their face does have some advantages and again every situation is different absolutely we are here live with ira block we're taking your questions please uh, put your questions in the chat um ira do you have a recommended go-to lighting setup that's portable and easy to travel with i've been using the uh 
the new pro photo well they're not that new anymore b10s b10 pluses the smaller units i have a lot of older lighting equipment that puts out a lot of power these units don't put out as much power as the older big units but you don't need that power anymore because in the old days when i could shoot only at iso 100 or maybe 200 if i was lucky uh, i needed power but now you know going to 400 or 800 iso with these cameras the images look fantastic so i'll take along you know one or two of these b10s uh two small light stands and maybe one or two modifiers Ira, you talk a lot about making pictures and you use the term taking pictures, you use these terms differently. Can you speak a little bit more about making pictures versus taking pictures? Making pictures are usually photos I do when I'm involved in production, where I'm working with, you know, a full-size camera, full-size lenses. I have lights set up and I'm orchestrating an image. I did a lot of that for a lot of my science stories for the National Geographic where you have to create images that tell a story about something that doesn't exist anymore or something that's too complicated. That's making a picture. Taking a picture is more of when you're in a situation, you want things happening naturally and you just let things evolve and you just you're there you may spend an hour there two hours with people follow them around and you're just taking pictures of what their life is about telling that story we got a question from someone who is also from new york saying there are so many photo opportunities in that city but if you had to choose just one location for shooting people that would be your favorite what would it be Oh, anywhere in the world? I think uh, in New York. I think this is someone who's looking for a little, like, I, I oh, in New York. Spot. There are, in New York, there are a few secret spots. You know, everybody has been everywhere, done everything. Uh, you want a spot where there are a lot of people and there are people doing things and where light is interesting and good. That's one of the reasons Times Square is such a good spot. It's not just the people there, but the light that you see in Times Square coming off of buildings and off all those uh, jumbotrons helps produce, you know, an interesting image. We have just a couple minutes, and I'd, I'd like to ask a little bit about horizontal versus vertical compositions. And I'm, I'm asking this because you and I have spoken about this in the past that especially when photographing people, you really like a horizontal composition. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Yes, I, you know, I just like shooting horizontally. It's more natural. It's the way you see as a human, you see horizontally. And even when I do, you know, tight portraits or, or even a little looser portraits, Ira Block, uh, Sony Artisan of Imagery and National Geographic Photographer, thanks so much for being here at Be Alpha Live. Thanks.